Hi everyone, Leo Notenboom here for AskLeo.com. One of my personal mantras, if you will, is that every day is an experiment and today is an experiment. What I've been doing, hopefully you realize that for actually I think the past year and a half, I've been narrating Ask Leo articles as they're published each week and then those narrations are provided as a podcast, if you will, or just a player down at the bottom of every article. What's been suggested is that I turn the camera on while I'm recording my narration. That's what this is. Uh, it's basically me turning on the camera and recording my narration of the article. Now, I'm also recording the screen as I do this. So what I'm hoping will add value are two things. One, there will be some video only commentary that you'll only get if you actually watch the video like this. I don't expect this piece of audio, for example, to show up in the podcast. And the other is that as I'm going through uh, an article, you'll actually see on the screen what image I might happen to be talking to uh, when I'm uh, recording or narrating uh, the text around it. Uh, maybe I'll even you know get fancy and throw in some zooms and edits and that kind of stuff. But the bottom line is that ultimately the next series of videos that I'm going to be doing will be narrations of Ask Leo articles. We'll see how it goes. As always, when we get to the end, I'll be asking for your feedback. And I always ask for that on the podcast by or on other videos that I've done by having you go to the article on askleo.com. You can leave your commentary there. Um, or since this is kind of a video only thing, you're certainly welcome to let me know what you think of the videos specifically by emailing leo at askleo.com. Uh, I'll get those comments and we'll see if these things actually add some value. I'm hoping that uh, it will allow more people to find Ask Leo and get their questions answered as well. So with that as the, uh, I'll call it the video only introduction, uh, we'll move on to the first article that this is going to happen with. How do I find out what program is using all my CPU? Occasionally, one program uses up all of your computer's processing resources. Using Task Manager, it's easy to figure out what program that is. I'm Leo Notenboom, and this is AskLeo.com. Question. My machine is slower than molasses in wintertime. I suspect that one or more programs are simply using up all of the available CPU time. How do I tell which ones they might be so that I can turn them off or whatever? Yep, that sounds slow. It happens to me from time to time as well. A program decides that it has something very, very important to do and uses all the computer's processing power to do it. The good news is that it's pretty easy to find out what program that might be. Multitasking is a deception. All evidence to the contrary, computers can really only do one thing at a time. Actually, each computer's core can only do one thing at a time. A dual core machine can do exactly and only two things at a time. A quad core can do four and so on. Be it one core or dozens, to you and me, it looks like one computer doing several things at once. Many more things that it has cores to do them with. The magic is that the computer is constantly switching back and forth between all those things so quickly that it looks like they're all happening at once. They're not. CPU hogs. When one program needs all of the CPU's attention, other programs that also need the CPU might not get enough time to do their work. Exactly how that manifests on modern multi-core machines depends on how the software was written. If the software was written assuming a single CPU, so-called single-threaded software, you'll see one core of a multi-core processor fully used while the other cores remain available for other things. You might see a solid 25% CPU usage on a quad-core computer, for example. On the other hand, if the software was written to available, <clears throat> so you'll also see, this is a video only comment, you'll also see me do some of these restarts. What gets edit, edited out of the audio uh, is these missteps. Uh, sometimes we'll actually edit them out of the video, but this one I'm going to leave in just to show you a little bit of how the sausage is made. 
On the other hand, if the software was written to use all available CPUs, multi-threaded software, it's not uncommon for a CPU hog to fully utilize all the available CPUs. Sometimes it's the right thing to do. What you've asked the program to do really does require all available computing power. Sometimes it's a bug or a sign of some other problem. Task Manager. In Windows 10, Task Manager can help us determine which process is hogging all the CPU. Right-click on the clock and click on Task Manager. The initial view may be exceptionally unhelpful. By default, Task Manager only displays those programs you've explicitly run. We want to know about everything, including the software that makes up Windows itself. Click on More Details near the bottom of the window. Not only will you see many more programs listed, you'll see that each includes information about the system resources being used. Click on the CPU column header. This will sort the list of running software in order of decreasing processor usage. As you can see above, it's OneDrive, or rather the OneDrive service, that's the biggest current user of CPU, 26.4%. If this were a quad-core machine, I might suspect OneDrive was completely using a single CPU. Since this is a two-core machine, it's just OneDrive doing its thing. SVC host can be special. One of the common culprits in unexplained CPU usage is something called service host, or SVC host. You can see it as the number two item in that list above. Click on the name column heading to sort the list by category and name once again. Then, scroll down to the Windows Processes. You'll see that many instances of Service Host are running. Service Host can do many things, as you can see, but one of the more common culprits over the years has been the Windows Update Service. For a variety of reasons, it can get confused and show up as hogging the CPU. There are several approaches to fixing Windows Update. Task Manager, already built into Windows, is a quick way to identify those CPU hogging culprits whatever they might be. For links related to this article or to leave a comment, visit askleo.com 3003. I'm Leo Notenboom and this is askleo.com. Thanks for watching.